I recently saw on social media some other instructors discussing tip, a life hack, if you will, for teaching their class and keeping track of their notes for how to run that particular class better the next time they teach it. So it requires some discipline uh, to make some notes after the class. This worked well, this didn't, we ran long, whatever it might be. And I certainly take advantage of that too. Of course, I'm using Markdown and a text editor and the web, and I wanted to show you how I do it using those tools. So here is my notes for one of my classes. We're going to be discussing algorithmic bias. The beginning of every class I have show and tell, so I encourage students to send to our Canvas discussion thread for this. Things they've seen in the news related to what we've talked about to share any connections, examples, things that are even funny, uh, lateral thinking, puzzles, whatever it might be, try to build continuity of discussion across the specific classes. I also try to interleave particular exercises. So critical thinking exercises, and here we have an example of a writing exercise. So if I open this, this is a slide deck. And so we step through these particular slides and particular exercises. So in this case, I'm, I worked with a, a colleague to develop some slides. Actually, I borrowed this from uh, her and then added some puppy pictures. But to take some prose, think about it, is this a good thesis? If it's not, why is it not? And so this is an interactive exercise I do with the students. Once they've had their go, I then review what some of the concerns are about that particular thesis. We review our previous class, and so we were talking about ads and ad blockers. And so I capped that class by asking them to make note of what the most complex or confusing concept or insight or whatever it is that we talked about that class. And so I ask them to share that. That gives me continuity across the classes again and also is a little bit of self-quizzing, like this particular question isn't that great, but often it comes in the form of a quiz. And then we're going to be talking about algorithms. Just to note, I also have a little heads up to remind me what's coming up next, and I can tell them a little about what's going to happen at the next course, the next class, at the end of the existing class. I also make a note of milestones, and so if I want to say, remember your privacy assignment's coming up, I click on that, that takes us to that particular day and the specification for that assignment. I also have some resources, Syllabus, Canvas, Zoom, Google Drive, links to the students' responses they make before class, their wikis, some lateral thinking puzzles, as well as some timers. So if I ask the students to break off into a group and I want to give them four minutes, I can start this timer. But let's look at what this looks in Markdown. So here we have the markdown for this particular course. And what is nice is whenever I need to move something from the flow of this class to the top, I have a place mark called here. So if I just type here, this is where I am. And then I'm going to be talking about privacy and collapsed context. And so I have the whole of my course in this class note document. And I can just bounce up. And where I am now in this document is always here. So in my next class, when I'm prepping for that, I'll cut this, go to here, paste it, and then grab the next section. But here I have some comments for myself about, you know, uh, did I run short or did I run too long? What other things could I include or do I have to cut? Things that I should update the slide decks with, the link to the show and tell, the link to the thesis exercise, review of the last class, and finally, the link to the algorithms slide deck. And so if we look for that, here we have the algorithm slide deck. And each heading and subheading corresponds to a slide. And these have questions, exercises, images, provocations, short YouTube clips. And so if we were to look what that looks like in the deck, and here I'm using Reveal.js, a JavaScript-based uh, web-based slide deck. So these are the slides, right? I can show something, ask a question, reveal my insight or answer, short video clip that we can watch, some images, 
And then we're going to talk about Kathy O'Neill's weapons of math destruction, but let's first understand what an algorithm is and you know, a little two minute video explaining that. What is a model? What does that mean? And then I have an excerpt from the actual reading. So there's a lot of this. Note that here I have two question marks. That's a note to myself to say that I want the students to break out into little groups and talk about this for four or five minutes before reporting their discussion back to the whole of the class. And we've got our slides. I'll note it is nice using HTML because it's very easy to link to one of the readings if it was online or supplementary uh, reading for the course and the class. And we walk through. And then the wrap up for today is I'm going to ask them to write down three techniques for curbing weapons of mass destruction. That will then be the question that I use to review today's class in our next class. Right? Same question, really. Something I ask the students to do, or require them if you read the syllabus, is they have to write so many reading responses throughout the semester. And so for class, 90 minutes before the start of class, I ask students to send me an email. Uh, they write these on their HackMD wiki and send me a link to their page with a couple hundred word response with some questions, insights, or connections. I read those before class. And as I go through those, I sometimes have the opportunity to say, I would want to call that particular point out during the course of our discussion. And so in Markdown, I think that's call. And then I might say, oh, let's call on Jose. And we want to talk about uh, how Google, Google's search and other ethnicities, perhaps. Let's spell check that. <laughs> Oh, ethnicities. That's interesting. Maybe let's check that I actually have that spelling correct. Ethnicities. Yeah, so I can add that to my spell checker. It's no longer underlined. Close the call. I rebuild it so that you see I built my slide deck again, and if I go back, I refresh, and if I go back to that Latanya Sweeney slide, you can see I now have a little hmm face, and that reminds me to call on a particular student because they had an interesting insight or connection. When I hover that, you can be like, oh yeah, Jose, you made an interesting point about algorithmic bias, maybe with other ethnicities. And again, Next time I prep for my class, I'll take this section, I'll remove it, I'll go to my place point, I'll go down, grab whatever the next class is, make note of whatever I said there from my last time I taught it for things that I should do this time. And I have a terrible memory, but all of this helps me keep things organized. I hope you found that interesting, at least. I don't know if everyone wants to do this, but if you are interested in using Markdown and a text editor, I certainly recommend it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.